What is up, what is up, what is up? And welcome back to the Hip Hop Comic Shop. I am your host, Black Manta. And with the help of VR Trooper, today we're bringing you another episode. So today, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and discuss something that I think is uh, very dope that's dropping right now, that a lot of people are heading out to right now, is uh, the new Spider-Man movie, No Way Home. But what I want to discuss with that is Spider-Verse. Yeah, Spider-Verse. Now, not talking into, um, into the Spider-Verse, which was a very fantastic movie. What I want to talk about is the 2014 comic storyline that led to this movie, well, to that movie. And Spider-Verse uh, was a uh, very, very good uh, storyline that uh, I really did enjoy, that I had no idea that it would be good at all. And especially because Dan Slott, he's not my favorite uh, artist or writer, but I have to give the man props. When he did this storyline, it was fantastic. Um, let me just give you a few little uh, points about that. It's a uh, storyline about a character named uh, Morlin, who was introduced in, I think it was Amazing Spider-Man 30, Volume 2. And he is a character that is jumping from timeline, different universes, to take out uh, other spider characters, uh, spider totems, if you will, uh, throughout different uh, universes. And when I say spider totems, I mean any character that is uh, like uh, Peter Parker, Miles Morales, uh, anyone who has spider powers. And it's fantastic. Now, um, what I want, how do I want to say this? Uh, that was the big, big, big difference between the uh, Spider Verse comic book and then Into the Spider Verse uh, animation movie. Basically, the, as we all know, uh, the Into the Spider Verse has Kingpin trying to bring his family back, and he's using a device that, you know, brings all the different universes together. And that's how you get, you know, Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Ham, uh, Spider uh, Ghost Spider, you know, Gwen Stacy, you know, Spider-Gwen, Miles Morales, and the other Peter Parker, right? But in the, uh, in the Spider-Verse comic book, which came out in 2014, uh, it's basically just Morlin and his family, the um, inheritors, who are hunting down every last spider-like character, and they are killing them. They're not trying to just, oh, we're just going to beat you. No, we're going to kill you and eat you. So it's a great, great, great run to read. Um, if you haven't read it, I suggest that you get a chance, uh, see if you can find a graphic novel and read that unit. So what I want to show you, man, is some of the books that I've got, uh, just leading up to it, the, uh, some of these, some of the uh, side issues and then some of the main issues. Um, here's the first one that, I, that pretty much starts it off right here. It is Edge of Spider-Verse, the su Superior Spider-Man, number 32. That right there is pretty dope. I'm not a fan of Superior Spider-Man. I did not like that storyline. A lot of people do, but if Dan Slott was setting up Superior Spider-Man to do this, then only that I can say is good work. And then I also have this variant of 32 Superior Spider-Man. I think it's pretty dope. It's a Scotty Young joint. I, I like the way that looks. That's pretty dope right there. Uh, So this is basically just, uh, they're just jumping through time, man. They're jumping through time, jumping through different universes. If you have a, a spider type <laughs> ability, they are coming for you, man. They are not playing. Uh, Morlin, they're like, basically like, they're like vampires in a way, but then they want to eat you. So you tell me, and they're freaking hard to kill, hard to kill. 
<laughs> and uh, actually, let me jump back real quick. Um, one of the best storylines, not the best storylines, I think they kind of did a disservice to Spider-Man, is when they did the other uh, storyline, which was a 12-issue uh, storyline when Spider-Man, Peter Parker, is fighting Mormon. And I suggest you read that. I'm not going to give that away to you, man. But if you get a chance, read that. Then read Spider-Verse. All right, here we go right here. This is uh, Edge of Spider-Verse, Superior Spider-Man number 33. And that's one of the inheritors right there, They're trying to take out uh, Superior Spider-Man. Uh, we have these other, like I said, little offshoots that they're just doing little short stories in. Amazing Spider-Man number seven, and it is the British Spider-Man, if you will. <laughs> and that's pretty much who he is. <laughs> uh, that's pretty dope. Then you got the uh, Last Stand. This is Amazing Spider-Man number eight. And it's Spider Girl, Last Stand of Spider Girl. That's May Parker. So I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, they're jumping from this Earth to this Earth to that Earth. And what's funny about it, man, is that all us uh, real Marvel heads have been—not real Marvel heads, but just people who've been reading Marvel for a long time, and even DC. We all know about the different universes that they have, and how they're always trying to bring them all together. So, you know, you got the Ultimate Universe, you got the 616, which is the original Marvel Universe, 616. And then you have this, this different, I don't know. I don't know them all, but they're out there. So, that's just something I have right there. Uh, here we go right here when they went right into Edge of Spider-Verse. This is number, hold on, let me start. Let me go ahead and make sure I get the right one in there. Here's number one. We got Spider-Man Noir. That was uh, voiced by Nicolas Cage, which was a dope character. Actually, his uh, his first run, his first appearance in Spider-Man Noir uh, is a very good book to get if you can get your hands on that. That is going for a nice little uh, penny. You know what I'm saying? They did a nice little series of Noir. They did X-Men, Luke Cage, Punisher, uh, and Spider-Man. Uh, I think that's all of them, but I may not uh, be correct on that. And if I'm not correct, please let me know. Then after you got Spider-Man Noir, there was the first appearance. I don't have that comic. I had it, but I should have kept it. It was uh, Spider-Gwen. And it was her first appearance. And it showed her how she became uh, Spider-Gwen. So that's pretty dope. Uh, I do have this uh, variant edition right here. Bam. That's a pretty nice little variant right there. Rocket Raccoon, Marion Aunt May. <laughs> kind of like a reminiscent of when Doc, Doc Ock was marrying Aunt May. Alright, and then we have this Aaron Aikman, the Spider-Man. This is the Edge of Spider-Verse 3. So these are all just everything that's leading up to Spider-Verse. So, you know, these are different Spider-Man who are getting attacked by the Inheritors or Morland and his brothers and sisters, his father and uncles. I mean, they're really this. It's just like a whole family of, of vampires or something like that just attacking all these different Spider-Man. So it's very cool, man. I mean, I was quite surprised how great the story was. All right. Then here we go. Then boom, right after that, then we actually get The Amazing Spider-Man number nine, Spider-Verse part one. Man, the artwork on these are just fantastic. Okay. Now, <laughs> I have to go back. I got to correct this. I'm going to go ahead and let me stop this right now real quick. Executive producer is Quasar because he did bring this up to me. So Quasar, my apologies. I didn't start this off with, you know, give me a shout out right away, but I'm stopping it right when we start getting into the meat of this. <laughs> this beautiful copy right here, Quasar is the executive producer of this episode. He did say, hey man, you should do something about the uh, Spider-Verse joint scene, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing. Once again, I'm going to give you a shout out again. Thank you, Quasar. All right. Mesa Spider-Man number 10. This one's featuring Superior Spider-Man, him and Peter. Catch up. Because Superior Spider-Man is actually in the future. He is in the year 2099. And he finds out that Peter Parker well, 
I'm not giving away the story, but there's a reason why he's in Peter Parker's body in the year 2099, but then Peter Parker is in the present day. Gotta read it. Gotta read it. <laughs> So I don't want to give the whole story away, man. I just want to go ahead and show you some of these books, man. Some of these covers that I have. I don't have too many variants of the main story. I have just, you know, the base books, if you will, that came out. There's number three. You know what I'm saying? And, I mean, just the different Spider-Man that they come across, man. I mean, there's um, Miguel O'Hara, who is 2099. You got the regular uh, 616. Peter Parker. You got Miles Morales, who's the ultimate Spider-Man. You got, uh, man, you got Spider-Ham, you got 1602 Spider-Man, you got Spider-Woman, you got Madam Web, man, it's just, uh, what was it, Ben Riley, uh, the Scarlet Spider, man, it's just so Ghost Spider, it's just Spider-Man after Spider-Man after Spider-Woman after Spider-Kid, you know, there's even an Aunt May Spider-Woman, how crazy is that? But here's another one right here where it shows all the inheritors. And all, man, look at that. Maybe it's taking heads. I love that one right there. That would be a dope poster if you had that as a poster. Real talk. Real talk, man. Um, man, whew. This is artwork, man. It is just, it's just beautiful. They really built this story up correctly. They really did it right, man. And, man, here's this number five right there. And there's my Spider-Punk. That's my favorite character out of this whole little jump off right here for Spider-Verse. Yeah, ooh, Spider-Punk. Cold-blooded, man, cold-blooded. Um, oh yeah, Silk is in this as well. I mean, they have a uh, Captain Universe, Spider-Man in another, in another uh, uh, shoot, -off, uh, shoot off of a uh, universe where Spider-Man keeps the uh, Captain Universe powers. Oh man, it's this is dope, man. This is a very dope, six part little run right here and here is number six this is where everything goes down look at that man that's the curve the, the cover art the 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 book art on the inside of the of the of the uh, of the comics man they really put it down they really planned this out very well and i'm wondering because i haven't seen it yet if they're gonna do something similar with uh, Snow Way Home or with this Spider-Verse 2. You know, I, I'm, I'm very interested in that. And it does end off with this epilogue right here, which, you know, kind of like, you know, you know, go, it, it, it basically, you know, gets all the loose ends all tied up and lets you know what's going on. Now they did uh, actually have a part two to this. It was called spider Given. Do I have those? I have a couple of those. Let me see here. But I did put to the side just to show you guys. I really didn't keep up with that one. Reason, you know, I just didn't didn't have no love for it like that. But I built right here. You do get Spider Punk. That's my G right there. Love me some Spider Punk right here. We get Vaults of Spiders number one which was very dope. It has the Japanese Spider-Man with his giant mecha. You know what I'm saying? That's very cool because I like how they did that because they went ahead and took uh, the Japanese Spider-Man show. I think it was like late 70s, early 80s. And they actually put him into the comic book. Man, that's so cool. Uh, and then also right here with this Clayton Crane, this spider kid at zero. That is funky. I love that. That's some beautiful art. I've got a lot of uh, Clayton Crane's uh, artwork as far as uh, some of the stuff he done for X-Force and it's that definitely a lot of the stuff that he's done for Carnage. I like the way that man puts uh, his uh, work together right there for his covers and some of his, uh, actually his uh, artwork on the inside of the books is very, very fantastic. He, you can tell that man puts a lot of time and he puts a lot of effort into his, uh, his work. Um, there was something else I wanted to show you guys. I want to have it right here. Keep a lot of my books right behind me when I'm trying to set this up for you. Let me see here. Uh, no, I don't. 
Oh, yes I do. Yes I do. Now this has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. This is something that I'm happy to uh, show you guys. I could have saved this for another show, but I didn't want to do that. I, want, I, I just recently got these and I'm so happy about it. I finally got to complete. This is one of my uh, comic book checklists, my bucket list, if you will. Um, all right. This is the 30th anniversary of Spider-Man, and I have uh, the Spider-Man number 26 with the hologram cover. That's dope. I love that. Um, I've always had this one right here. This is all my reader. This is a reader. This is also a reader. The Amazing Spider-Man 365 hologram cover. This has the first official, I guess if you want to say official, uh, appearance of Amazing Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara. This has uh, a five page uh, little sample for you to read and check it out. Very dope, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see here. Also, I picked up, now these are just my two recent pickups that I got, which I'm so happy to get. Uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man hologram cover, number 189. And this right here has a very dope poster on the inside of that. So, you know, that's great. And I lucked up and got Web of Spider-Man number 90. This is also the 30th giant size anniversary hologram. And it comes with the gatefold poster of Spidey and Spider-Man 2099. And now actually this one has never been opened. This still comes in the poly bag. So I lucked up and got that for 15 bones. And I've seen this book right now going for about 110. So I need to, it's never been opened. I need to go ahead and send it off. There's a little tick on the back, but I think I could probably get at least a 9.6 out of this. Uh, but man, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to uh, share this with you, man. And you know, you know how I do. Sorry I haven't been around in a while. Just been doing some personal stuff, trying to take care of some business for the family and myself. Um, but please like please subscribe please leave a comment and also if you have seen uh let's go ahead i'm just gonna go ahead and say have you seen venom have you seen venom 2 have you seen spider-verse into the spider-verse and have you seen uh the new spider-man movie no way home if you have please tell me what you think which one is your favorite and uh don't leave any spoilers because <laughs> i probably will go see that man we probably gonna hit up a drive in and go check that out all right, y'all, this is Black Manta saying peace, love, and be safe out there. Catch you on the next one.